Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is another installment of Unity 101, where I talk about things I wish I knew when I first started using Unity. So, in this video, I want to talk about something that you may have noticed, may not have noticed, but was kind of a kind of puzzled me when I first encountered it and really gave it some thought. And so I wanted to talk about it and really um, some of the deeper concepts that go with it, which is this little check mark right here that appears next to some of your components some of the time. And I never really understood at first why that was happening. I would have some components, like this one here, that has the check mark, and then some that don't, like this one here. There's no, no check mark. They, for all appearances, seem to be the exact same thing. I've got, you know, a uh, float here. I've got a public string. I've got a public bool. But there's no, there seemed to be no rhyme or reason why does one offer this check mark and one not. So first thing to understand is what that check mark is. And really what all this check mark is saying is, is this component enabled or is it disabled? And the reason that it appears is because it only appears when your script cares about that fact. Every, any component can be enabled or disabled, but there's only certain functions that really care about it. Things like um, your start function, your update function, your enable function, your disable function, um, colliders tend to care about it, things like that, or collisions tend to care about it, but any other function that you have that you're making that doesn't directly involve the Unity scene probably doesn't care, so that's why Unity doesn't give you that check mark. It just, it's, you don't need that extra button there, so they don't include it. It's kind of just streamlining things. So let's jump over to the code and see how that's working. So this is our no check mark. We just see, we, we see here we just have those functions. In our check mark script, however, we see we have those three variables, but we also have an awake function, a start function, an on enable function, and an update function. And these three here all care that the component is either enabled or disabled. So that's why we're seeing that check mark there. Awake doesn't actually care. If you just put awake into a script, it's not going to add that check mark. However, I wanted to include this for the kind of second half of this video, which is talking about how these three, um, these three functions all interact with one another. So in order to start talking about this, I'm going to jump back over to Unity, and I want to talk about this other check box up here at the very top of your game object. And what this check mark is, is whether or not that game object is active. Um, game objects are either active or inactive in the same way that components are either enabled or disabled. They're two different terms for basically the same idea, except one is for the game object as a whole. So let's uncheck both of these. So right now, this game object is inactive, and likewise, this component is disabled. We hit play, and we see nothing happens in our console. You know, there's nothing's being called right now. Interestingly, I can even enable and disable this component and still nothing's happening. And that's because all of these functions, in order to be called, need the game object to be active. If it's not active, they're never going to get called no matter what happens. Now, however, if I check this off and I activate the game object, we see that await gets called. Our script isn't enabled, our component is not enabled, but awake is still getting called. So awake, does, like I said, does not care if that component is enabled. It always gets called the very first time a game object is activated in a scene. Typically that's the start of the scene, but it could be later on. We can see now, even if I check and uncheck this, it's only being called that one time. So now, what happens when I this is active, what happens when I enable this component? You would think we're going to call start and we're going to call on enable because we're enabling, we're definitely enabling this and that's usually when start happens too, right? However, it's a little bit trickier than that. What we see happens here is first on enable gets called. First thing that happens when you enable this, the component is on enable gets called and that does kind of make sense. That's what's happening first and then start gets called. And start only happens in the same way that awake only happens the first time that you activate a game object, start only happens the first time that you enable that component. We can see now if I uncheck this and re-enable it, 
only on enable it is getting called now. I'll do this a few more times, you see. The on enable is pile right up, but start only gets called that very first time. And so those are the really the main differences between them. Awake only cares about the game object. Start cares about the very first time the component gets um, enabled. And on enable happens every single time the component is enabled. But it is worth noting that it go that the order that it happens is awake gets called, then on enabled, and then start. Here I'll even do this to show you here. Very first when we very first start the scene, both things are active and enabled, and that's the order. It's awake, on enable, and start. So do be careful that if you have anything in, in on enable don't have it relying on something from the start function because that's not going to happen yet. The wake function is usually a, this, your safest bet for initializing things like that. So here's a quick helpful chart to um, that kind of encapsulates what I've just been talking about in terms of awake, enabled, and uh, start. So anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and it helps make a little bit more sense out of what's happening when you are um, first activating your objects. And uh, hopefully this helps you get even a little bit more mileage out of the code you're writing for your games. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.